it's now time for the word. Um, we're going to go ahead and transition into that. If you have your Bibles, uh, if you have your, your cell phones, your iPad, your electronic devices, if you have your Androids, we are sorry for you. It will take a little bit longer as yours loads up. Amen. <laughs> we're going to go ahead and turn to Romans chapter 8 a very familiar passage of scripture. And as you're turning your Bibles, I, I know that uh, this message is for the house today because it was such a, uh, if you can keep playing for me. I know this message is for the house today because it was such, it, it was such a pull on me as I was preparing. And um, I literally, I was just telling Nate, I literally almost changed the message because for some reason it, it just, it didn't seem like it was flowing for whatever odd reason, and I never had that feeling before in preparation. So I started to change the message, and I prayed. I was like, Lord, you know, what's going on? You know, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to say? How do you want me to say it? How you, how are you going to breathe on this? Just take it. Do whatever you're going to do. So I literally sent the information over to our media team late last night. I usually try to get over a little bit earlier. And as Bravis was worshiping this morning, and they were singing a song, he holds it all together. I said, okay. I said, okay. And Lord, I got you. This is, this is your church. It's your word. You're going to do whatever you want to do. But that was confirmation. Because we, we, we couldn't get off that song, he holds it all together. And as we begin to read that scripture, if you, if you don't already know it, it's going to make sense to you in a second. Romans chapter 8. We're going to start reading at verse 26. If you don't mind, please, could we all stand for the reading of God's word? Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Thank God for the worship team and the security team and the ushers and the band and the sound team, our video team, everybody that has a hand in making service go. We thank God. Yeah, that's a good place to clap. We thank God for you all of the planning that takes place. We thank God for each and every hand that goes forth and making service run in the manner of excellence. Amen. Romans chapter 8, we're going to start at verse 26. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. And the Word of God declares, And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, when we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying, for the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. Key verse, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Key verse, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purposes for them. For God knew his people in advance and he chose them to become like his son so that his son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Last verse, and having chosen them, he called them to come to him. And having called them, he gave them right standing with himself. And having given them right standing, he gave them his glory. Again, key verse, verse 28. And we know that God causes everything. everything. Some things. Everything. A piece of things. Everything. No things. Everything. everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Dear God, we thank you again for this time that we get to take part in your word and hear exactly what you have to say. I pray, Lord, as always, that you would move me out of the way, speak through me, breathe on what you have already said and what's already typed down. And God, may it touch the hearts of your people so that when they leave this place, they will never be the same. In Jesus' name we do pray. Let all God's people shout amen. 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 As you're taking your seats, I just want to speak to you briefly. Um, I won't be before you long. Y'all know me. I'm not a long-winded preacher. I say what God says when I get out the way. I won't be before you long, but I promise you I'll be through just as soon as I get finished. 
just want to speak to you from a topic called the perfect recipe. Amen. The perfect recipe. So I don't claim to be a chef, um, nor can I brag on my culinary skills, but I know a thing or two about food simply because I like to eat. <laughs> and on the rare occasion that I do throw on an apron and prepare a meal, I found that following a recipe has usually yielded the greatest results. I've mastered the southern sweet potato pie and barbecue ribs smoked on the grill simply because I can follow a recipe. And I would have put pictures of those for you in the slides, but I didn't want everybody to get hungry and lose your attention and then y'all would hear nothing else I had to say. But these recipes provided me with a set of steps, ingredients, cooking temperature, and detailed instructions. And if I miss the step or fail to use a required ingredient, I ran the risk of ruining my desired outcome and prolonging the amount of time it would take before I could enjoy the results. Spiritually, I believe God views us in the same manner. He is the chef, we're his ingredients, and based on his desired outcome for our lives, he provides us with a vision which leads to a spark, which leads to an opportunity, which leads to an assignment. And they all work together to create a final result. We have a tendency to see the vision and race to the outcome while skipping and or ignoring steps, all the while prolonging the amount of time it would take for God to enjoy his desired results for our lives. My assignment today is to help you understand that everything you encounter has the potential to work in your favor. I'll say that again. I believe God sent me here today to let you know, and God sent Bravis this morning with that song that tended to bless the house and set the atmosphere to help you understand that everything you encounter has the potential to work in your favor. Amen. Everything that we encounter, everything that we see, every step that we take, every person that we meet has the potential to work in our favor. Amen. Behind your mask, just look at your neighbor and say, it's working in your favor. Amen. So I see your minds and I hear the questions that you're wondering now. What do I need to follow God's plan to get the results? Thank you for that question. I appreciate you working with me. Y'all know I'm a talk back to me preacher, so I hear the question. I heard everybody say it collectively. What do I need to follow God's plan to get the desired results? Work with me if you will. We're all gonna be chefs this morning, and we're gonna bake this spiritual cake. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take these ingredients, and each ingredient is specific in its individual self, but it's needed for the desired outcome that we want. Amen? So here's a list of ingredients. These are things that we're gonna need. Confidence, love, and the one that we don't like, patience. Confidence, love, and the one we don't like, patience. What is confidence? The feeling or belief that one can rely on someone or something. Confidence. Second ingredient, love. The intense feeling of deep affection for someone or something. That's love. Patience. The capacity to tolerate delay or suffering without being angry or getting upset. That'll preach all by itself. Because the whole house, is, especially this side, is like, man, I don't need no patience. And it's funny, the old church would tell you, don't pray for patience. Because if you pray for patience, then the Lord is going to allow you to go some things that's going to put you in a position where you have the ability to get angry or upset. So then you're mad at God. The God's like, well, Joker, you asked me for patience. How can I give you some patience if I don't put you in anything that's going to cause you to be in a position to wait? 
and it's outside your ability and the extent of your power, what you can do to fix it. It's a whole nother sermon. That was free. Y'all just put that in your back pocket. Patience, the capacity to tolerate delay, the capacity to tolerate delay or suffering without anger or being upset. So those are the three ingredients. We're going to use those. I got another ingredient that I'll add at the end where we're going to use those to make this cake. Everybody, y'all got your aprons on? Are we ready to cook? Yeah. We ready to bake? Yeah. Amen. So let's go ahead and dig into this. Paul is the writer of Romans. And at this time, Paul had to write to Romans because the, the newly converted Jews and the Gentiles who had converted to Christianity, Christ is already gone. But they're trying to understand his teachings and there's conflict that is going on because the Messianic Jews are still hung up on the law and what the law meant and how you had to do certain things in order to be right with God. And then you had Christ who had just come on the scene and kind of flipped that on his head. He didn't come to, de to demolish the law but came to embody it. So now you have these new Gentiles and people who weren't a part of this Jewish upbringing who didn't know the Torah and didn't have to recite it day after day, word by word. So now they just know that God is love. He loves me. And if I accept him and if I believe that his son Jesus was there and died for us and was the ultimate sacrifice, then it's all good. So you have this bickering back and forth, and Paul is writing this letter back to them. Romans is considered the, the cream of the crop when it comes to New Testament writing. He wrote so much, but Romans is the one that seems to be uh, most quoted and, and, and the longest and the most in-depth. And Paul is writing to these people, trying to get them to, to understand everything that Jesus did in its simplest form, how it works for us, how we are to embrace it and embody it, and how it works for our lives. Amen. And so what we have here is these writings, and it comes to this point where they're talking, and he's talking about the Spirit and how the Spirit works. And we get to verse 28, and he says, And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for their lives. And this is often one of the most misquoted scriptures as well, because we tend to just lean on that part to say, Well, God, all things going to work together. All things going to work together. You know, I may be doing bad right now and I'm not living how I'm supposed to live, but all things going to work together. And while that might be true, there's a part out there that you're missing that's left out. Because all things work together for the good of those who love God and who are called according to his purpose for them. You see, there's some prerequisites that are needed for everything to work together. So here we go. Here's my first thought. Confidence in the character and the power of God is the cornerstone. First thought, confidence in the character and the power of God is the cornerstone. What is a cornerstone? If you know anything about architecture and about building, once they get the foundation laid, they lay the very first stone. Based on where they put this very first stone will determine how the rest of the stones work out and how the structure is eventually put together. If you don't get that first stone right, the structure won't be right and you have to start everything all over. So in other words, confidence in the character and power of God is our cornerstone. We have to have the confidence in his character. His character is who he is, what he does, how he responds, how he acts, how he makes us feel. We have to have confidence in his character and his power. It's twofold. Confidence in who he is, but also confidence in his power and his ability of what he can do. In other words, I know who God is and I know what he can do. And if you haven't been through anything, that might not really make sense to you. But for all the mature people and the people who have gone through some things that didn't understand how it was going to work out, it's not until you get into a position where you need God at your worst place and then he comes through. And this thing just makes so much sense on the other side, right? Pastor David always says life is lived forward but understood backwards. And it's not until you really go through some things sometime, and I know that's everybody in the building and everybody watching online. It's not until you really go through some things that you really understand his character and how powerful he is and his ability to sustain and his ability to move and his ability to work when you don't think it's working and his ability to open doors when you need a door open but you don't have the key and it's locked and you don't know how it's going to work out. That's when you really understand the character and the power of God. And that is the cornerstone, I believe, of what God is saying in this scripture. And 
I said we're baking a cake, right? And we're all going to be chefs. Confidence and the character and the power of God is the cornerstone. Uh, the certainty is the foundation. That's the base. So in other words, that's going to be our flour. Because you can't make a good cake without flour. And don't make my cake with gold metal flour. We're going to have a problem. You better get that swan down and bring that in. And let's work that out. So that's our foundation. So that's our first ingredient. The confidence in the character and power of God is our cornerstone. That's our foundation. That's our flour. You can't make a good cake without some good flour. And if you really know how to make it, you're going to sift that flour so it'll be real light because I don't want it all clunky and my cake to be heavy. People of God said amen. amen. All right, I'm in the right house. Okay. First thing, that's it. Confidence in the character and power of God is a cornerstone. Amen. We got that. Here's my second thought. Love and adoration for God seals the union. So we have the confidence. Now we throw in the love. Watch this. In verse 28, it says that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God. That's key. He causes things to work together for people that are in relation with him. And it's hard for me to be in a true relationship with you if I don't love you. Okay, I guess I'm the only one that had my heart stepped on because I thought I was in true relation just to understand that I wasn't really loved anyway. And I was given and given and given and it was taken for granted. But when you're really in true relation and the love is there, that really seals the union and holds everything together. That God causes everything to work together for the good of those who what? Love God. That's a prerequisite. Everything is probably not going to work together for you if you don't really have a relationship with God and you don't really love him. It's not enough for you just to say it, but God knows your heart. There's a lot of people who say they love God and don't even believe in him. There's a lot of people who say they have love and embody love, but all they think about is themselves. And they can't do anything or do anything for anybody else. But see, there has to be love there for God. And watch this. You can't fool God and think that you're going to just say you love him. Come in here, throw your hands up, shout the dust out of a carpet, but don't have an inch of love in your heart. You're not fooling anybody but yourself. You have to really embody and really feel that love and honor that relationship with God for who he is and what he has the capacity to do. Love and adoration seals the union. Our sincere affection for God reveals our commitment to him. God really understands and knows how committed you are to him based on your heart. Because you can't fake your heart. You can fake gifts. You can fake attitudes. But you can't fake your heart. You can't fake your face. That's what I like to say. You can't fake your face because your face is going to tell it all. You can be sitting there as quiet as you want to be, but something happened and you turn your... And everybody, you can't fake, that. that's just like your heart. You can't fake your heart. God knows your heart. He knows every hair on the top of your head. You can't fake that love and that communication and that, that union with him. See, your love and adoration seals the union. The love is the binder that holds everything together. So let me go back. We're baking this cake. We got our flour. And now you got to add your eggs in there as well. Because if you make me a cake and don't add eggs, I'm going to have a problem with you. And I'm going to look at you a certain way. True testimony. So I told you I can bake a good southern sweet potato pie. I had a lot of mistakes and I messed up on a lot of pies before I got my recipe right. Don't look at me like that. Y'all don't cook. Y'all used to mess up too. Made a sweet potato pie one time and I didn't put eggs in it. I didn't realize it till the pie cooled off and I went to cut it and everything fell apart right? That's why love is like that. Because then once it's cut, once the relationship is cut, you really feel out how the relationship is and if the love is really there. Love is the binder that holds everything together. Love and adoration for God seals that union. So we're mixing it together. We're mixing it. We got the flour. We got some other things. We got the eggs in there. We got the base. We got, we got the, the binder that's going to hold it all together. And here's my third thought. Patience to withstand the unknown and the uncomfortable. Patience to withstand the unknown 
and the uncomfortable. So we have our confidence, we have our love, now we need some patience. Patience to withstand, patience to withstand the unknown and the uncomfortable. Look at that verse again, just one verse, but watch what it said. God causes everything to work together. It didn't say Dorian causes everything to work together. It didn't say Bravis causes everything to work together. It didn't say insert your name here will cause everything to work together. God causes everything to work together. And, and that requires some patience because sometimes, and I'm not just talking about me, when I say we, this is everybody, but we can get to the point where it's not working fast enough, so we're gonna go ahead and make the phone call. We're gonna go ahead and use our relationships. We're gonna go ahead and use our business contacts to move this thing forward because it ain't working as fast enough. We're gonna go ahead and use the extent of our power and what we can do, and then it gets messed up, and then we run back to God, like, God, yeah, God, I need you. God was like, I was already working on it, but since you, he's a gentleman, since you decided to put your hand in it, I decided to step back and go ahead and let you work on it and see how it worked out. Patience to withstand the unknown and the uncomfortable. God causes everything to work together in that scripture. We can't put into that scripture. We can't add to it. The Bible is already sealed. We can't add to it to make it work out for our good. It's already there. It's already set. We can't do it. God causes it to work together. When God begins to work, he doesn't seek our approval or solicit your opinion. Yeah, that hurt. That's why the church got quiet. It hurt my feelings too when he told me to write it down. God doesn't need your approval. And he doesn't ask you what you think. So you mean to tell me the God that placed the stars in the sky and they have been staying there for thousands of years past that needs your approval? The God who has the sun in perfect ratio of distance from the earth because if it was 10 feet away, we'd freeze. And if it was 10 feet closer, we'd burn up. You mean that God needs your approval or your opinion? The God that literally turned the sea into a highway for the children of Israel? That God needs your opinion? The God who literally causes the dead to rise? The God who causes the lame to walk? The God who causes the blind to see? That God needs our opinion? God doesn't have to ask us for anything. And he doesn't. And he won't. God will literally shape us so that we can understand what he's doing. And because of that, I thank God. Because he doesn't have to tell me anything. But he shapes me so I have an understanding. So even when I'm impatient, I just say, God, I know you're working. Even when I want it to work faster, God, I understand you're working. Even when I'm frustrated, I'm not perfect. But when I get frustrated and I'm, and I'm driving and I'm talking to God in such a way that he could literally, because when you have a relationship, you can do that. Because when you have a relationship with somebody, you can speak and they know it's coming from your heart and it's not damning and it's not messing you up. And you got to be careful because the way folks talk to you will really show how they really feel about you. Okay, yep, some of y'all missed that. Stop letting folks talk to you any kind of way and think they love you and think that's relation. Because if they really truly love you, they're going to honor your feelings and how you feel. And they won't talk to put you down, but they'll talk to build you up. That's not even in my notes. Patience to withstand the unknown and the uncomfortable. When was the last time God asked you for his advice, for your advice? I'll wait. I'll let you come take the mic. If you can tell me, God, say, hey, what you think about this? What you think about this move I'm about to make? What do you think about this? God doesn't solicit our opinion or ask for our advice. And because of that, we have to have a certain level of patience to withstand the unknown and the uncomfortable. And I'll tell you this, how you, how you handle patience is really where your heart is as well. Because God knows if he can trust you, if he can hold something from you that you know is yours, but you can't get it. But you can see it, and you need it, and you want it. And how you act in those times literally shows God who you really are and how much more development you really need. So if you find yourself waiting on some things all the time and you're lashing out, it's not God, maybe it's you. Let's check ourselves. It's always good to check yourself instead of God checking you. I'd rather check myself than let God slap me upside the head. Let's, let's get our own selves right, amen? Patience still with understand 
the unknown and the uncomfortable. And here's my fourth thought, fourth and final thought. I told y'all I wouldn't be long, but I think this is necessary. So we have our base, we have our binder, and now we need some patience. There's a sidebar. A lot of times when you're hungry, you ever notice when you're real hungry, you can't wait for the food to get finished? Like it seems like the oven is taking forever and forever. Okay, that's just me. I'm, I eat a lot. Forgive me. So now we got everything mixed together, so now we're just waiting patiently. Now here's my fourth and final thought. We're four minutes left. Individually, everything may not seem good, but they're better together. Individually, everything may not seem good, but they're better together. Watch this. If you look at all the ingredients when you're cooking, you put some things together. You put salt, you put milk, you put butter, you put all these different things. Have you ever just like tried a stick of butter? Or was that just me when I was like nine or 10 where I literally just bit some butter? I'm like, nah, bro, this, this ain't it. That's, I made that face. This, this ain't it. This not good. How, how do you cook with this? You can't just eat this. You ever had too much salt? Like you just got some salt and put it in your tongue or just had too much, okay, that was just me. I was, I was weird, I was the only child, I was bored. You ever had too much salt? And how that literally just turns your stomach, your blood pressure, you just feel it rising from your feet all the way to the top of your head? That is not comfortable at all. Have you ever like, anybody ever sipped buttermilk? Have you ever had vanilla flavoring and just by itself, just tasted vanilla flavoring? lemon extract, all of that stuff. Somebody say, yeah, it was nasty, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, yes it was. See, individually, everything may not seem good, but they're better together. Watch this, same verse. God causes everything to work together for the good. God causes it all to work together for the good. Y'all better watch out, I might have a praise team come back up and start singing that song again and just take us into a tremendous worship. God causes everything to work together for the good. Apart, some ingredients may not be flavorful, but when combined, they balance each other out. <laughs> life is understood. Life, we live life forward. It's understood backwards. It doesn't look right. When we look back, it all came together. Everything that happens in your life won't be pleasing, but all together they work. Individually, everything won't be pleasing. But all together, it works out. I gave you my testimony earlier during the giving time when I was talking about how I was unemployed for 18 months. Individually, that's a trying time. Individually, that was very frustrating for my wife and I and the kids because we literally had to change our standard of living. Individually, you wouldn't understand how that would work out and how somebody could stay sane. But looking back on that 11 years later, I see now how that kind of worked out for, not kinda, I see how that it worked out for our good. And oftentimes when we look back on situations, we see how they shaped us for the future. Because watch this, you didn't understand what a good relationship was until you went through that bad one. You didn't understand what true love was until you had to deal with poor love. Because now I don't look at jokers the same, I look at them different. You can talk as slick as you want to. I know, I, I know what bad love is. I know what it is when you, when you just yank at my chain with some poor communication. I, I know what that means now. So now when I'm approached, I know how to handle that. I can see them a mile away. I tell my kids all the time, you can't slick a can of oil. I know everything you're trying to do. I've seen it all before. And it's, not, and it's because I was a child and I knew how to operate. I knew how to twist the story to my mama to get what I wanted. So you can't come to me and twist that story and think I'm going, I invented that. I was that person. But watch this, I wouldn't understand that if I hadn't been there. You wouldn't understand how to make good decisions now if you had made so many bad decisions 20 years ago. Some of y'all got a 750 credit score now because you had a 500 10 years ago. So now you're paying your stuff on time, you got your stuff together because you don't want to go back to that. Individually, everything may not seem good, but together it's working for your good. God never said everything that we be, that God never said everything would be good. He said they would work for your good. 
the good and the bad, the comfortable and the uncomfortable, the gracious and the not so gracious, the good relationships and the bad relationships. This is how we look at our lives when tough things come our way. He didn't say everything would be good, but that they would work what? For our good. Embrace things that may not make you comfortable. Embrace things that are causing you to have patience. Because when you see those things coming, you know they're going to be beneficial for something else down the line. And that's hard to say. I know it is, church. It works for me, too. I go through those same things. Don't think just because I stand up here with a microphone that I don't go through anything. Because I got a litany of testimonies. I can tell you how some things didn't work and how I was frustrated and how I thought I would be in a different place. But when I look back, because life is lived forward and understood backwards, I see how all of those steps lined up to get me to the place of where I am today. And it wasn't by my own power, by my own merit, but by the work of the Lord. And if, if I could just get you to understand today, everything may not seem good, but it's working for your good. All things are working together. You may be thinking right now, this, I, I don't understand how that's going to work. I'm so frustrated. My heart is broken. I'm a ball of tears right now. I just can't show it. Everything is going to work together for your good if you love God and line yourself up with his purpose. Just one verse today, one key verse. Pray on it this week. Think about it this week. Let it minister to you this week. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. If you want everything to work together in your life, establish a foundation of love with God. Understand and recognize his power and his capability and his ability. Establish your love. Honor your patience. We are made perfect in patience. We're made perfect in that. Honor that and know that it may not feel good, but at the end, when you give your testimony to somebody else who's dealing with the same thing that you went through, because the word says we are overcome by the blood of the lamb and the power and the word of the testimony, you have a testimony for someone. Someone is literally watching you right now and they're going through something that you went through five, six, seven years ago. It's your duty to be honest with them and honor them by giving them your testimony and telling them how God worked for you. That may be the very thing that would carry them over to the next level. We got to be honest, y'all, and we have, to be, we, have to, we have to stand in humility. And we have to be mature enough to receive somebody's testimony without running back and talking about everything that they went through. Because now you just aborted what you have to go through. And while you think you were putting them down, you really lifted them up and got them further and pushed yourself back farther away. That was free. Y'all can take that. Listen, here's the central idea, and I'm done. And I understand not what God was doing because this is not that type of message to make you shout and run around the church. But this is the type of message that is solid food that we need because we can't stay on milk forever. And sometimes we have to graduate and really understand what substance is and know when something is ministering to your spirit is a word from the Lord. Here's the central idea. Everything that we encounter has the potential to work in our favor if we have a true relationship with God. I believe that encompasses everything that I've said this morning. Everything that we encounter has the potential to work in our favor if we have a true relationship with God. Amen. All, head bowed, all heads bowed, all eyes closed. Dear God, we thank you for another opportunity to hear your word today. I pray, God, that everything that has been said today was said the way you wanted it to be said. I pray, God, that it has literally pierced the hearts of your people, those in the house and those that are watching online. I pray, God, that they will take what was said and go forward with it and understand that you cause all things to work together for those that love you and those that are operating in your purpose. Show us, God, how to love you through your word. Show us, God, how to connect with your purpose through your word. Speak to us, God, as we go forth this week so we continue to be 
the people that you've called for us to be, to spread the word to your kingdom. Help us be a light in the workplace. Help us be a light in our homes. Help us to be a light in the grocery store. Help us to be a light in restaurants as we go back and forth. Help us to recognize opportunities to evangelize and minister to the brokenhearted, to the down, to the departed, to the weak. God, give us opportunities to plant seeds. And God, you'll water, you'll bring harvest in your time. Give us the humility to share our testimony to help build others up. And we pray, God, that it doesn't fall on weak ground. God, we thank you for everything that we encounter, everything that we go through, because you ordained it. You lined it up. You have a desire for a specific end result. And help us latch on to that. Give us words, God. Give us dreams. Give us Give us what we need, God, to latch on to what you would have for us to do. Help us to walk in your purpose. And as you're consistently mixing these ingredients together in our lives, we'll patiently understand and check ourselves to know that it's all going to work together because we are tied in, we are locked in, we are bound to you and your word. And God, we thank you for the desired outcome because we know it'll work in our favor. It'll yield dividend-filled results that will literally bless us over and over and over and over again. You're the ultimate 401k. You're the ultimate investment plan, and we invest our lives into you. We count it all joy. We love you and we honor you. If you receive that word today, let all the people of God shout amen. Let's give God a huge hand clap of praise. Listen, one thing that I want to do before I go ahead and turn this over to Pastor Jonas, um, all of, we know all of our students are getting ready to start back school on this week. We know all of the teachers and administrators and school leadership uh, we are releasing our children back to you and all the parents shout amen. amen. <laughs> but what I want to happen, if you are a student and you're getting ready to go to school, whether you're getting ready to go to college, like my daughter over here, um, if you're going, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you're an adult going back to school like myself, if you're getting started again, all the students, please stand. If you're a student, please stand. If you are a teacher, please stand. If you are a school administrator, please stand. If you have anything to do with the education system, please stand. Let's give them a huge hand clap of praise. Listen, what we want to do um, as a church to remain standing, we want to go ahead and we want to pray for all of you. So everyone else, if you can just stretch your hands forward towards somebody in your vicinity, towards a student, teacher or administrator this is literally a challenging time a time that we have not seen before and they are there's so many things <laughs> so many things happening um, literally turning into a political debate about our kids going back to school and it's not up to me to stand here and give my own personal opinion, but it's, it's up to us to align ourselves with what God wants to do. So um, as you're praying individually, I want to pray over the house and I want to pray over all of the administrators. If you're online, go ahead and grab your kids. If you're an administrator, go ahead and stand up because we want to pray for you as well, even though you're not here, but God's word stretches and reaches. And we just want to pray that God covers each and every one of you. We want to pray that the noise of the media and 
the, the scare tactics and the political back and forth doesn't infiltrate the minds of our students and the people that God has ordained to pour into them. We want to pray that everything that happens in those school buildings and those classrooms is from a pure heart. And not based on any other agenda but the Lord's. So God, as we once again um, have our students and administrators and teachers and everyone involved in the education system begin to embark on this cycle for the 2021 and 2022 school year, God, we anoint them now in the name of Jesus. We pray, God, that you be the ultimate filter and remove the noise, remove the frustration, remove the anger and bitterness, remove the unknown. And God, we pray a hedge of protection around them. We pray against lewd and lascivious acts from others. We pray against those that will prey on their innocence. God, we pray that you would literally charge your angels even now around the schools. Provide a hedge of protection. God, we pray that you give our students even now the ability to block out the noise in the name of Jesus. Well, there are so many things that can distract the learning process. Pray, God, that you filter them and cover them, cover them even now in the name of Jesus. Give them the ability to retain. I pray, God, that you would give them the ability to tap into your desired outcome for their lives even now in the name of Jesus. And though they may not understand it now, I could pray, God, that you give them that spark that will lead to them understanding their strengths and what you call for them to do. I pray, God, that you will put people in their lives that will literally pull on their strengths in the name of Jesus. That they will pull on what you've already had for them. Place people in their past, God, that will literally help mold and shape what you have for them to do. Pray, God, that you give them confidence even now to walk boldly in who they are in their own skin. We pray, God, against bullying tactics. We pray, God, against these gang violences and the fighting and everything that is breaking up our youth in the name of Jesus. God, we come right now, God, and we ask you to break up that foul ground that is literally making our children think that is more valuable to be street cred and street famous and online famous than it is to be a child of the most high God. So we pray right now, God, in the name of Jesus, that you move these things out of the way. God, raise up leaders. God, raise up people in our communities who mean well for our kids, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for a hedge of protection. And even as we cover them in our own homes as they go out each and every day, I pray, God, that they pick up the spirit of prayer. I pray, God, that when they don't understand things, that they literally have a mindset to pray. And even when they don't know what to pray for, we thank you, God, that the Spirit is working on their behalf and is praying even when they don't know what to say. And I pray, God, that even when they don't know what to pray for, but they feel the unction to pray, they just begin to call on the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for covering and keeping them. We thank you, God, that this will be an amazing year. God, protect their health. God, do what a vaccine and a mask cannot do in the name of Jesus. Prepare their minds even now that there'll be good ground receiving those seeds so they can go off and be who they need to be, who you've called for them to be. Help us as parents, God, to nurture those gifts. Give us divine insight, God, to see how we need to 
to push them along the way. They're your children. You gave them to us to steward them. God, give us the ability and the wisdom and the knowledge to guide them to be who you call for them to be. We pray, God, for an amazing year. We pray, God, for amazing growth. God, the school board may not think that our kids are going to go forth and grow, but we know, God, in the name of Jesus, that our kids will grow. They'll continue to grow and be the light in our communities. They'll be the change agents in the schools and be the next realm of leadership in our communities. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody shout amen. Amen.